Welcome back everyone to Bergzerg Arcade. Today we're going to be playing around with our item system a little bit more. So let's go ahead and roll up Unity. And I've gone ahead and added a few entries to our database here just so we had something to work with. So I've just gone ahead, you know, your name and of course a sprite. And we've covered this before. You just go ahead and use what we've created so far. Add your name, add your sprite, hit save. And I noticed there's a few things here I didn't like with the way we're entering. I uh, want it's possible just to keep hitting save and have it save, you know, this, this, something under the same name several times. So what I'm going to do is actually have it by default, not have a name. And when we hit that button, check to see what the name is equal to. And if it's equal to well, em an empty string, we're not going to save it. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then after that, I want a way to list all of the ones that we've created so far, because we're going to end up hiding this in the end. I don't want people directly working with the database, I want them to do everything in the editor. Now, the way that I normally do this is I usually have no basic app partition at the side here and over here, I'll have some sort of list view and I'll just list all of the entries that we have in the database. And of course you select it and it would show up on the other side of the, the window here. Of course, you know, depending what you're displaying, how many fields and whatnot, you're gonna have a bigger window. But to be honest for this, little database that we have here, there's only two things. We have the name and we have a texture. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna make that texture smaller. So what I'm gonna do instead of putting that small little list over here, I'm just gonna use the whole window for the list. Now there we can just click on the, the item itself if we need to make any edits. I guess we'll have to add a little delete button along the row as well to uh, use that to delete. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start with that. So first up, Let's change this so we can't just accidentally keep it and save and make a bunch of entries. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Unity. Oh, sorry, we are in Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Visual Studio. And we're gonna come back into our IS quality name. I'm gonna equal to null or empty, I should say. Now, there's other ways to do it with string.empty, but I'm just gonna do it this way. I think everyone, people that aren't programmers are gonna understand this a little bit better. So we'll save that off and we'll come back into the database. And we'll look for the save button. And we're gonna take a look and say, if selected item is equal to null, return. And we could add an or statement here or an and statement, or sorry, it would be an or statement. But I'm actually just gonna make it a separate if block. Again, I know it annoys the hell out of the, the people that have a lot of programming experience to see me do things a little bit more verbose, but I, a lot of people that follow the tutorial series don't have a lot of programming experience. So having a few extra lines of code here and there really does help them out. Plus it's a great, I guess, uh, exercise for the people that are a little bit higher level to refactor it and get it a little bit more efficient for yourself. Now this is an editor script. It doesn't have to be 100% efficient. It just has to run. So we're gonna say if dot selected item dot name, whoops, is empty. Why do you keep doing that? Um, because I got a dot at the front here. And we're also going to return. So we're not going to save anything to the database. We're not going to go and set it to new. And if we go ahead and save this off, this should be the first part. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down. It changed, it looks like, just as I closed it. But okay, we'll start it back up. Everything starts as empty. If I hit save, nothing should happen. Great. Now, don't mind if the sprite itself is empty. I might not want a background for some stuff. So I'm going to leave it where you can still have that be empty and still add stuff. But for instance, legendary. Do we have that? We do. We have epic. Uh, let's let's do godly or goffly. Yeah, that'll work. And I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm just going to hit save and it shows up. And it's just none. Well, all the rest actually have something. That's fine. So we've got it set up. So that's working. Now let's start working on the list. So I'm going to come down back into our scripts. I'm going to come into the editor and well, let's take a look, see how long this one is. This one's really not that long, but once we start adding in all of the formatting that we're going to be using to get things well formatted right on the screen, I find the scripts can be absolutely massive. So I like to break them up into partial scripts. And for those that are new to partial scripts, basically it allows you to spread out your code over several scripts. 
And well, that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So let's just go ahead and we'll just do it. So I'm gonna come in here, out of the editor, we have the, the database editor. Let me try to widen this up a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and create another one here. And what do I wanna call this? Let's call it list view. I want a capital for view. I'll go ahead and open this up. We're gonna go ahead and reload everything. It's one of those weird things that happens. And the first thing we're gonna do is come over to our IS quality database editor. I'm gonna come into here. And under the, where it says class, we wanna put partial. That's just telling C Sharp that this is a partial class. In other words, it's only part of a class. There's another part that we're gonna add on to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this off. Then I wanna go ahead and copy this. I'll come into our new script here. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Paste, then make sure you get both closing parentheses. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. I don't think I'm gonna need the editor window in this one. I am gonna need the Unity editor though, because we are gonna be using some Unity editor features, but we'll add it as we need it. And if we go ahead, save this off, jump into Unity, I just like to make sure there's no errors. Nope. Great, so I'm gonna come in here and the first function I'm gonna create, uh, it will be private. We're just gonna not have it return anything, void. And I'm just gonna call it list view. I will add a little comment at the top here, list all of the quality, well, we'll store qualities in the database. Great, so we're gonna go ahead and the very first thing I wanna do is start a scroll view. And we can access one of those through the editor. Now we're actually gonna need it. So I guess I should have done it at the beginning. So editor, GUI, oh, no, it's GUI layout. Uh, begin scroll view. I'm, again, I'm trying to keep the formatting for now as minimal as possible. We are gonna need this scroll view because we could potentially have to uh, scroll depending on how many we have. And if we take a look here, we're gonna need a vector two for the scroll position. And then the parameters, other additional parameters that we're gonna put in. So let's go ahead and make that vector two first. Now I'm gonna put it in here, but I am gonna move it to our, what I'm gonna call the main script, which is this one here. I like to keep all my globals here. But for now, I'm gonna put it here. So vector two, keeping it private because no one needs to see it. And I'm just gonna call it scroll pos. I'm gonna use it here. And since I want this to span the full width of our our editor window. I'm gonna go ahead and put a comma there and we will do a little bit of formatting. I'm gonna call GUI layout dot expand width, which means we're just gonna expand the width of this particular element, which is our scroll view. And we're gonna set it to true. And I made the mistake. I didn't wanna expand the width. I wanna expand the height. And then anytime you have one of these begin somethings, there's generally an end to it as well that we gotta put in. Think of it as a tag. So editor GUI layout dot end scroll view. So just think of it as the parentheses when you're making code. You know, you, when you've got one that begins, you need one that ends. And I'm gonna come down here just to keep things a little bit separate. I'm gonna call it display qualities. And I'm gonna call this from here just to keep it separate from the layout stuff. So we are gonna be adding more layout in here. And I wanna keep the code for actually just going through the database and pulling it out in a different function. So display qualities. There we go. And uh, we need a way to actually display this as well. So I'm gonna go back into our IS quality database editor, come down to GUI. And right now we have the, all the stuff to display uh, the add quality database. I'm actually gonna comment this out for now. We will create a finite state machine later where we can go ahead and basically depending on what button we're, we're currently playing around with, uh, we can change what is being displayed. But for now, I just wanna play around with the list view. And we're gonna come back into list view just to make sure this is displaying. I'm just gonna quickly throw out a GUI layout label. And we just need a string. We'll go ahead, save this, and when we start it back up, all right, we've got displayed. So we got this displaying. Let's go make it do something. Go ahead and get rid of that. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and move this. 
as well, our scroll pass. Now, sometimes I do get in the habit of leaving it on or leaving it in this script simply because it doesn't need to be accessed anywhere else except in this script. And I don't know, I'm always torn between that. Do I leave it in this script because it's only ever accessed in this script or do I move it because I'd like to keep all my globals together? I'm of the mind to move it. I'd rather keep them all together than to have that potential later on trying to search for it. I don't know. I think it's going to be one of those things a little bit different for everyone. But I'm going to go ahead and set it down here. And I will make it just a tiny comment. After this tutorial, I'm probably going to go through and start doing a little bit more commenting in here. I'm going to leave it up to you to do the commenting as I do tend to talk quite a bit during the series itself. So you should be able to take that and make your comments as well. Just hit that pause button. And we're going to say for the list view. We'll go ahead and we'll save that off. We'll jump back into our list view. Okay, and we're going to come down here to our display qualities. And we're just going to create a simple for loop just to loop through everything that's in the database. So for int cnt is my default counter variable is equal to zero. cnt is less than. Now here's where we're going to go in and get that quality database dot count. And of course, we'll iterate through so we need to increase it. And to start off with, we're just going to go ahead and display that name. So quality database dot get. And if we take a look here, we take an int. Remember we set this up, I believe in the last video. So we're gonna pass in cnt dot. And what do we want out of it? We wanna get that name. Great, so we're getting the name, but we're not doing anything with that name, right? It's returning a string. So let's go ahead and let's print that out in a simple label, like we did up top. So GUI layout dot label. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close that off simply like that. We'll go ahead, we'll jump back in. Make sure there's no errors. Booyah. Jump back in, here we go. We've got that list, isn't that pretty cool? Of course, we can't actually do anything with it, but let's go ahead and we'll fill a few more things out here. The order I'm gonna want things in is sprite, name, and I want a delete button, something that we can click in a little mobile or module ugh, model modal window will pop up saying, hey, do you want to delete me? Are you sure? Um, and I think I actually mm, don't want that at the beginning. Let me take a look here. I usually put it at the beginning, a little X, a little box with an X at the beginning, but we could put it at the end. I think it makes more sense to put it at the end, to be honest. I think that's what I'm going to do. Mm, yeah, let's do it at the end. Uh, delete button. And another thing I tend to do for larger editor scripts is also have an edit button where I'd click it and it basically opens up the the add interface, except it pre-populates everything. And that's, of course, when we use the, the modify part of our database. Uh, I think for this one, because it's only two fields, I'm gonna allow them to modify in place. Show you different ways to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and create this here, but we're gonna take care of this GUI layout and we're not gonna do a label anymore. We're actually gonna do a text field. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this here. And if you've ever used the old immediate system for the GUI in Unity, you'll recognize this here. All we're doing is taking a text field. We're saying this value here, which we're pulling out of the database, the name, we're gonna go ahead and display it in a text field, but we're also gonna take whatever's displayed in that text field and reassign it back to the database. And of course, if we let it update, these will all switch over to text fields. There we go. Partway there. Next, I'm gonna do this button. I'm not gonna give it any functionality yet, but I am gonna do the button. So uh, let's do a GUI, layout dot button. Hmm, ah, sure, is there? Yeah, we'll use it. Man, there's just so many different ways to have things laid out, I get confused sometimes. So what do I want? I want a simple X, right? Yeah, it would be better if we had a graphic for it, but again, I wanna keep everything fairly clean right now. So I'm simply just gonna use an X. And we'll probably wanna assign a width to this because I don't want it to be very wide at all. There we go. Like, and because I'm not setting up special formatting, it is gonna just do them one after the other, which is perfectly fine. We'll format, well, I guess after we'll get everything working here, then we'll come back and format. Because I think after we're done this, we'll be able to modify. Yeah, I think we'll, for the most part, be done with the, the quality database. So I'm gonna need another one up here. And we can actually just grab the code from here. Where we're adding. 
Uh, here we're setting it up to be um, see from the selected texture. So that means, let's see, we're grabbing the controller ID. Well, for now, we'll go ahead and we'll just grab the button just to get everything displayed properly or a placeholder for everything. And I've got the semicolon here. We'll go ahead and put that semicolon in. And selected texture. I might just comment this out for now. That's actually going to be too wide. To be honest, I'm probably never going to have my textures be any bigger in game than maybe 64 by 64, not for this database anyway. All right, so go ahead, we'll click in there. And here's our scroll view, as you can see it works. Uh, try relaunching it. Uh, we're not scrolling. Let's go ahead, we'll take a look at that. We'll jump back into our code. And it's because we're not actually assigning it anywhere. So we have to actually take our scroll position and much like the text field, we have to go up here and assign it back in. So as we drag it along, it'll move. We'll go back into Unity, make sure we save that off, fire it back up. And now we can scroll, so awesome. We've got a scroll view. We've got the basic layout. We wanna get the name. We're gonna grab the texture next, and then we'll work on the functionality for our delete button. Let's jump back into Mono Develop. So let's go ahead and display the proper texture. So we're gonna come up here and say, selected texture is equal to, and then we can go ahead and grab from the database, the proper texture, except this time around we want the sprite. Oh, sorry, it's the icon, which is the sprite. And we wanna grab the texture. And we'll go ahead and grab this texture and put it back in here. And I like to test after everything. And we got a null reference. Whoops, let's go check this out. We're not gonna be able to do it until that is done. And the problem here is that we have one entry that does not actually have a texture. That's our last one here. Let me go ahead. Godly, it doesn't have anything assigned to it. If we went ahead and actually assigned something to it, this should work now. There we go. Um, these the same? Background. Input field, they're different. Oh, they look the same. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, so now, because we assigned something to it, it, it'll it work. Let's go ahead, we'll get rid of it again. Because I know at times I, I'm gonna wanna have it so that not everything does have uh, something assigned to it. So we gotta account for that. And we can just use the exact same code we used for the add. And we'll just check. So if, and let's just copy paste this part. We'll check the icon. And if there is something in the icon, I'm not sure if you can actually check the icon. I'm not sure if it returns a Boolean value. I think I've always just tested. Okay, it does return a Boolean value. All right. Else, selected texture is going to be equal to null. And that should work. Uh, I'm actually going to put a space here. And that should work for us now. There we go. And of course the last one, godly, we have nothing. Great. Let's go ahead, we'll hook up the functionality for this. Just like we did with add. So we'll come down, I'm gonna go right underneath here. Put a bit of spaces. And we can come right back into our add function here. And well, let's grab the functionality here. So we're gonna grab the int. I'm just making sure there's nothing here we actually have to change. That's right. Okay, there's gonna be a little bit here, but we're gonna go ahead and grab all that. That should be everything. Yeah. 
And we're going to need a bit of this too. Well, let's take it one chunk at a time. So when they click the button, we're going to want to go ahead and grab the controller ID. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in and we'll need the if block. We got that part. We'll go ahead, grab this. We'll then we'll paste this right here. And instead of setting the selected icon, what we're gonna what we're gonna set is the value in our database. Uh, that should work, right? Well, we're gonna give it a try, see what happens. Go ahead, let it recompile. We've got no errors. Let's start it up, see if everything runs fine there. And I guess we'll start off with Godly because it has nothing. We'll go ahead, we'll give it a check mark. And it switched all of them to check marks, not what we want. And did I put the CNT in there? I did. So we're going to have to find some way to store the actual index of the button that we clicked. So uh, we'll come up here. Actually, this is called every time on GUI is called, which we call multiple times a frame. So we're gonna have to do it somewhere else. I'm gonna just throw it right up here. We're gonna move it right after, but we're gonna go ahead and create a private variable called, well, it's an int, and we'll just call it selected index. And I'm gonna start it off equaling negative one. And we're gonna move this to our main editor script here. And we have selected item, selected texture, and I'm going to go ahead and put our selected index there. And this will just keep track of the index that we're on. Now, the reason why I have it set to negative one is when we're iterating through our, our databases, it's always going to be a value of zero and up. So we can check to see that if it's a negative one. And if it is, then we know that you know, something's wrong. Don't do anything. Set back into our list view. So we're going to come down here. So this is where we click the button. So right at the very end here, I'm going to say selected index is equal to CNT. And then we're going to come down here and we do need to check for it because like I said, this is called multiple times a frame. And if it's this one here, we're going to go ahead and say that the selected index, that's the one we want to change. And then the very next line after that, I want to go ahead and set our selected index back to negative one. And we're also going to need a line right above here. Yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll do it in here. And we're going to see if selected index is equal to negative one. And if it is, let's just get out of here. And let's not make it equal to negative one. Let's actually compare it. See if it's see if the value is equal to negative one. And I think that should do it. We'll go ahead, we'll save this off. Jump right back in no errors take the first one here let's go ahead well, as soon as we click something it should change there we go uh, it's only working the first time we click on something hmm is that the behavior we had for add if so this is something we might want to fix Let's go ahead, we'll save that off. I'm gonna come back into our other script here. I'm gonna hide our list view. Let's go back to add. Start it back up. Pull our window to the side, we'll hit circle. So yeah, it does assign it as soon as we click it. I thought we had to double click. I have to look into that because I want it to be, when you double click, it actually puts it there. Okay, but this is changing in accordance with uh, what we selected. So maybe it's that if statement we put in there. That has to be it. So go ahead, we'll close that down. I'm gonna go back into the list view. Now just keep in mind, all those people that voted, those hundreds and hundreds of people that voted and said, you wanted to see me work through the problem instead of just giving you a finished script. This is what you get, <laughs> but that's fine because you're going to encounter errors like this on your own anyway, and it's good to be able to work through them. 
So I'm going to say if it does not equal negative 1, and we'll go ahead. Now I'm going to leave the repaint out of it. I want to repaint anyway. Now let's go ahead we'll put the repaint in there. I think this will work, right? So we'll go ahead, we'll select the first one. Ah, it's still not working. And I'm guessing it's because, well, maybe if repaint was outside, is that what it is? I always like to close the editor, start it back up. I'm pretty sure if you just click anywhere in it, it'll be good. Hmm. There's something we're gonna have to work on. It does change on the first one. I'm just gonna go ahead and comment that out. Just do a little bit of testing here. So it's not changing all of them. So we're gonna have to get when this window is closed. Well, I guess we don't for now. I'm gonna make a comment because I don't like the way this is behaving. It works as intended, but I don't like leaving the selected index equal to the last thing we selected. I'd like to reset it to zero. I'm just not 100% sure where I got to set that to zero. I have to play around with it a bit more to figure it out, but I want to set these to the default values again. This one was a circle, this was a square, this one's a check mark, this one is null. Okay, so anyway, we got that working. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of research behind the scenes and if I figure it out before the next video, I'll go ahead and set up a video for that. And I guess next we wanna get this X button working. It's actually getting pretty late here and I've gotta get ready to go pick up my son. So I think it's probably better off that I end this one here and then after I pick up my son, if I've got time, I'll go ahead and append onto this video the modal window for deleting. If not, I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to make it a separate video, but uh, I wanna help get this up there so we at least get something every day for the next little while anyway. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.